For my most recent short film, Debtor's Hope, we built this prison set in my garage for just a few hundred dollars. In this video, I'm going to explain just how we did it so you can use this information for inspiration in your own films. And if you want to get started making your next film, make sure you check out the link in the description to my full free guide on funding and producing your next film in less than seven days, even if you have no equipment and no money to your name. When it comes to the setting of your film, you pretty much have two options, shooting on location or constructing a Set. Most independent or low budget films opt for shooting on location because generally speaking it's either cheap or free. Why build a detailed restaurant set when you could just ask a few local restaurant owners if you could shoot on their location for a few hours after they close. However, at times it can make more sense to construct a set even at the indie level. The setting of your film should always be motivated by the story that you're telling. The film Debtor's Hope is all about keeping your focus, your hope, fixed on something that you care about through the most difficult times. My goal in this film was to illustrate what hope looks like in someone's life with the redemptive promise in Jeremiah 31 17, there is hope in your future. What a beautiful promise to those oppressed and imprisoned in anxiety, depression, and darkness. Jeremiah's prophecy was a promise about the coming of Jesus and the grace that he gives to people to help them during their darkest and most hopeless times. But in this film, my intention was to give Jeremiah Mathen, the main character of the film, a promise of hope and grace during the darkest time of his life when he was losing his father's property because of the foreclosure. So at the climax of the film, I wanted to put him in a completely hopeless environment so that his constant hope and focus towards what he wanted most could be emphasized. Prison was the perfect place to do that, but shooting in an actual prison, even an inactive one, was just going to be logistically unfeasible for our production. So we opted to build a prison set in my garage instead. We decided to build a partial prison set, not a full room or series of rooms. The plan was to build four four foot by eight foot wooden frames that could be arranged into two walls of the prison. Then we'd also build a 10 foot by eight foot frame with poles running through it that we could shoot through like we were shooting through prison bars. With the schematics drawn, we got to work. We started with four 4x8 four wooden sheets. Using screws and 2x4s that we cut down to size, we turned them into standing frames with a cross beam to throw sandbags over in order to prevent injuries from one of the frames potentially falling over. In one of the frames, we cut a hole towards the top to use as a window for the final shot of the film with the sunlight coming through the window. This would allow us to symbolize the bright hope of Jeremiah in the middle of a dark, hopeless place. Then it was time to start painting. First, we spray painted the PVC tubes we planned to use as prison bars. Then, we started doing the same for the fronts of the wooden frames, but unfortunately, we ran into a snag. The spray paint we were using wasn't thick enough to cover the wooden sheets. The wood texture was still very visible, and even after two full cans of paint, we weren't even close to getting the look of a concrete wall. To make things worse, because of issues with casting, we ended up having to construct the prison set the day before the shoot. Everything up to this point had been a full day's work for my line producer and myself, so now we're looking at unpainted frames at 10 p.m. the night before the shoot after everywhere that we could get paint had already closed. So we decided to scrap the prison bars altogether and just focus on the walls since time was running short at this point. We came up with a new plan for painting the walls and a new plan for getting everything done. We didn't need the prison set until later in the shoot day, so while I handled shooting the rest of the short film on locations, my line producer ran to Menards to get paint. She rolled the walls and then just used spray paint for texture. We scrapped the wall that we had started to paint, but ended up with three great frames that really looked like they could be concrete. So with the set constructed, next comes lighting. Because we didn't have the frames finished before the shoot, I ended up not getting to put together a plan for how I was going to light the prison scene prior to the shoot date. We positioned the frames just below one of the ceiling lights in the garage to add some depth to the background, and then while I was debating on how to key the scene, my BTS videographer had the idea to put some metal shelving I had sitting in my garage on C-stands and blast a light through it to cast shadows into the scene that looked like they were being cast by prison bars from an outside light. It was a great idea, so we ran with it on the day. However, after reviewing the footage in post-production, I decided I wasn't really happy with what ended up being a high-key look for a scene that was supposed to communicate hopelessness and despair. So I called for a reshoot. I had a few additional shots that I wanted to pick up on location as well, so an additional half-day shoot made sense for the production. Here's how we lit the prison scene for the final cut of the film. First, we keyed the scene using an Aperture 100D boomed overhead to give the appearance of an overhead light in the prison. 
With no diffusion, this gives a great downcast look on the Talon's face with the eyes cast into shadow. Next, we added a kicker light coming in through the window to give the illusion of moonlight coming into the scene. It probably would have been a good idea to gel this light to be the cooler color temperature than the light overhead, but in this case, we didn't mess with that. Finally, we boomed a Neewer 660 over the background to give it just a little extra lift so the background didn't fall completely off into shadow behind the talent. And with just three lights, that's how we lit the prison scene for the short film, Debtor's Hope. Now we've only scratched the surface of what it takes to produce a full-fledged short film. We've actually produced several hours of behind-the-scenes content related to the film Debtor's Hope, including a director's commentary looking at the heart and vision behind the film, an interview with the lead actor diving into directing and handling emotionally driven scenes, as well as analysis of the production, funding, and distribution of the film, and so much more. You can find all of that through the link in the description of this video. But beyond all that, let me say, may there be hope in your future.